In this lesson, we're going to learn how to subtract decimals. In this problem, we are going to take away 1 and 2 tenths from 2 and 45 hundredths. When subtracting decimals, we would follow many of the same steps as we would when adding decimals. So our first step is going to be to line these numbers up vertically. And I'm going to line them up by place value using the decimal point as a guide. So you will see my ones line up, my tenths line up, and here in the hundreds place I have a five, but there is nothing below it. So in order to make this a little bit easier for us, we're going to add a zero as a placeholder before we subtract. Now, we would follow the same steps that we would when subtracting any whole number. We are going to start over here on the right, and we would subtract 5 minus 0, which is going to give us 5. And then we would move over to 4 minus 2, which is going to give us 2. And then finally, we would move over and subtract our 1's place, and we would subtract 2 minus 1, and that's going to give us 1. Just like in adding of decimals, we are going to place our decimal in our answer based on where it falls in the two numbers that we are subtracting. So we're going to bring the decimal straight down. And this is going to give us our answer of 1 and 25 hundredths. In this next problem, we are asked to subtract 4 and 3 tenths minus 2 and 155 thousandths. Now in a problem like this, it's really important that we add those zeros as filler because this type of problem tends to cause some confusion. So when I line it up, it's really important to keep the first number in a subtraction problem on top, no matter what, even if it looks like it's a little difficult because we have two blanks over here. Now, I will tell you that sometimes students have a tendency to solve this incorrectly. And when we have these blanks up here, we have a tendency to just say, okay, well, I'm just going to bring this straight down and make these two fives fives. And that is not at all how we would solve this. We cannot solve it in this way. So when we look to a problem like this and we line them up on top of each other, we really have to put in those zeros as placeholders because then we're going to see that we actually have to borrow from our three. So if I'm looking at this problem and I'm getting ready to solve, I'm going to look here in the thousands place and I can't take anything away from nothing. So I would have to look over here to the place to the left and I would have to see, well, I still have nothing here. So I can't take anything away from there. But if I look over to the tenths place, I will see that I do have something I can borrow. So if I borrow from this, making it a two, that gives me 10 to add to my hundreds place. However, now I have to borrow from the 10 in the hundreds place, making this a nine, to add 10 to my thousands place. And now I can subtract. So I can take five away from 10, giving me an answer of five. And now looking over to the hundreds place, I can take five away from nine, giving me an answer of four. And if I move to the tenths place, I can take one away from two, giving me an answer of one. And if I look over to the ones place, I can take two away from four, giving me a two. And just like before, I'm gonna bring my decimal straight down in my answer, giving me two and 145 thousandths. In this problem, I'm asked to subtract three minus two and five hundredths. Again, the three tends to offer us some confusion because it doesn't ha appear to have a decimal in it. But if I place it in the ones column, because it's a three in the ones place, I should know that I can add a decimal after the three, separating it from what would be a decimal. And it's the only place I can add the decimal point that will not change the value of the three. So once I place the decimal, I can add zeros as placeholders, and it will not change the value of my three at all. Once those are placed in, I can then subtract, but as you can see, I'm going to have to borrow. So again, I cannot take five away from zero, and if I look to my neighbor to my left, there's nothing to borrow, but if I look one more place to my left, I can see that I can borrow from this three, making it a two, and that will give me 10 pieces to add to my tenths. 
So now I can borrow from my tenths, making it a nine, and that gives me 10 additional pieces to add to my hundredths place. So now I can subtract 10 minus 5 equals 5, 9 minus 0 equals 9, and 2 minus 2 equals 0. So I can bring my decimal straight down in my answer, giving me my answer of 95 hundredths. Now I would like for you to try one on your own. Go ahead and pause this video as you try to solve 6 and 2 tenths minus 3 and 826 thousandths. Hopefully you were able to get the answer of 2 and 374 thousandths. In this lesson, we have learned how to subtract decimals.